Now, earlier in the show, we showed you how the K-State offensive line returning is going to be a pretty big part of the Wildcats' success, but mm -hmm. there's more on the other side of the ball, too. Absolutely. K-State safety Kobe Savage was having quite the season last fall before tearing his ACL in November. K-Nation reporter Landon Reinhardt caught up with Savage to find out how recovery has gone and how his summer's going. All right, Kobe, thank you for joining us. Let's just address the elephant in the room to start. Coming back from ACL injury, what, what's that process been like and where are you at right now? Um, it was a very tough and long process, I'd say. Uh, six to seven months, just uh, brutal recovery, rehab, uh, strengthening my leg every day. But right now, I'd say I'm about 90% going into July. I feel like I'm really confident before season, I'll be easily 100. You know, ACL tears used to be a thing that would end careers. And so to be able to be at 90%, you know, from I believe it was late November when you had the yeah. tear, to be at 90% right now, how's that feel? I mean, it feels really good. It's just a test to Mindy, uh, Matt Greenwald, and Matt Tomlinson, and uh, also Connor, and all the strength staff and our coaches for believing in me and pushing me throughout my recovery. If, if I could take you back to that day, you, you feel it on the field. You know something's wrong. What's going through your mind in that moment? I've never been injured like this, but I definitely knew something was wrong. Uh, I heard the pop. I just didn't want to tell many of them. I wanted to just see if it was anything less of what I thought it was. But yeah, I, my mind just racing, um, asking a lot of questions with Mindy and them. And yeah, I'm just kind of nervous at that time. Your teammates go on. They, they keep winning games yeah. after that, winning the Big 12 championship. I'm sure you're pumped, but watching it from the sidelines, what, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a hard feeling not being out there with those guys, but just seeing them accomplish what we set out to do this whole season was just, it felt just like I was out there just with them. Um, it, was, it was just an amazing feeling watching Ty kick that field goal, and I was just in tears with everybody else celebrating. Got a bunch of great guys coming back, both sides of the ball. How excited are you at the possibility of repeating as Big 12 champs this year? Oh, I'm really excited. I'm, uh, I'm really excited about the season. We do got a lot of new guys and uh, new faces that people will see out there, but... I'm really excited. But before you got here, you're playing Juco ball. Yeah. And then I, I remember when you first got here, you were saying, man, I've never played in a, a crowd like this yeah. before. Does being in that Juco environment almost make this sweeter? Yes, it does. Because like I said earlier, we didn't have that many people at our games. It'd be like family or maybe your close friends. But people up here, I mean, it's, it's like I have one big family watching our games, selling out every home game. And, it's a really nice environment to play in. Right away, you're running around, jumping up and down, making big plays. K-State defense is known for that mob mentality. What does that mob mentality mean to you? Um, it means a lot because we had a lot of the older guys that had played in this defense years ago that come and talk to us, and they were very passionate, saying how they even cry before games whenever we play. So just seeing their passion towards a game that they're not even involved with anymore just, just brought that extra emphasis on mob. Like, we need to try and go our hardest and put everything we got into the game. And then you're the type of player who's running around always. It's always 100% effort, flying after balls, whether that's an interception or a big hit, laying someone out. You, you could have come in and been, you know, like laid back in your first game, feeling out this this huge palace. Where do you get that drive? My mom, my little brother and sister are always watching me, whether it's on TV or supporting me. And I always want my little brother and them to go back to school and have a story to tell about me. So that was really my main goal, just to give them something to talk about at school. <laughs> what, what's the best story that you've heard from them? Uh, I know my little brother had a teacher who was a, uh, I think it was a, yeah, a TCU fan, and they got us the first time, but he got to go back and uh, send them a little screenshot of the score. So. What well, was that extra special, you know, being from Texas to? <laughs> Man, it's, it's the best feeling in the world when we beat a Texas school. <laughs> well, well, where would you rank the, the Texas wins then? <laughs> uh, I, they're at the top. They're at the very top. Baylor, Texas Tech, TCU the second time. They're, they're always at the top whenever we get to play Texas school. So one last go around with Texas this year. Is that going to be towards the, the top of the list? Oh, yeah. And we're at Texas. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's going to that's gonna be one of my favorite games to play. All right. I, I got another. I got a question from, from a fan that, that wanted me to ask this silly okay. question. But your last name, Savage, <laughs> has that helped you at all in, in playing? You know, because you kind of play like a savage, too. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I always. When I, the very first time I signed up for Pattern Football, a uh, coach told me that I had a famous name and I was going to be somebody someday just because of my name. So, yeah, it's always encouraged me to live up to that last name. What, what can we expect from the defense this year? Um, still a high motor defense flying around, uh, mind on ball mentality, uh, a lot of mob. It's going to be a lot of fast guys. Our defense is really fast. Coach Clarence says it all the time we have one of the smartest defenses and fastest de defenses in the country. So, a lot of, uh, a lot of mob mentality. What does being a smart football player and tell why is that important? Uh, I feel like it's very important because you don't have to be the fastest, the strongest, or the tallest to play football. You just need to be smart and be in the right area where the ball is around, whether that's a tip, uh, whether you can force the ball out, or you can be uh, quick to stop a third down. 
So I feel like being being a smart football player takes you longer than being uh, athletically gifted. And then lastly, you know, last time you were on the football field, you had to, you know, get, you, you walked off on your own, but yeah. you, you didn't go out healthy. Yeah. When you run out of that tunnel, that first game back, what's that going to be like? It's, it's going to be, I probably can't even, words can't even describe how I'm going to feel. I don't know, I'm just going to be so excited seeing everybody. I'm going to do my same ritual, go down there and pray, but it's just, it's going to be an amazing feeling running out that tunnel again. All right, Kobe, thank you so much. Thank you for the time, and we'll be rooting you on in the fall. So. Yes, sir. Back to you guys. Well, for the casual fan, you might look at K-State's defense and think, oh, they lost Felix on your DK Uzama. But then you remember they have Kobe Savage coming back. They got guys like Austin Moore, Daniel Green. Like, mm -hmm. they could still be very, very good. They definitely kept enough to where they're not yeah. going to feel that sting, hopefully, too much uh, from yeah, Felix they, and guys they, leaving. Very, it's going to be very dangerous. Yeah.